How to get ultra high risk to reward ratio trades. Hi, this is Charlie Burton at Easy Trader, giving you the weekend thoughts. So, um, risk to reward. We all know, you know, trying to get to one to two or one to three risk to reward ratio trades is lovely, and you can do really well with that type of um, risk to reward. But what about those elusive ones where you can actually turn um, a risk to reward into one to ten? So for every unit of risk, you get 10 rewards back. So if you risk 1% on your trade, then you make 10% on a single trade. How do you actually go about doing that? In fact, uh, I, I had a trade, this was a couple of years ago now, because I'm showing you a chart from 2018, because these this is really rare, but I had a 1 to 56 risk reward trade, which I took in the trading room. And funny enough, it was actually on... Um, one of these occasions when we had visitors in as well. So not only we had our members in that time, but we had um, visitors in as well. And it was 1 to 56. It was on this breakup day here. And it just so happened that it was <laughs> it was on dollar yen. And I think it was an intraday trade with something like a five pip stop loss at that point, And then ran it uh, based on the higher time frames, And it ran. It broke up and ran and became a 1 to 56. So how do you actually go about doing these, these ultra high 10 to 1 plus the real re the real way that you go about doing that is to combine time frames so if you're wanting to get into something maybe off of a daily chart but the weekly time frame or the monthly chart time frame are all lined up as well that's the way to get these bigger risk to reward ratio trades uh, we had a client who did like a 1 to 3 sorry, 1 to 23 risk reward ratio trade um, not so long ago. And again, just by combining time frames, you get in off of one time frame. So let's say you get in off a daily chart or a four hour chart, but then you look at the higher time frames to say, well, actually there's more of a bounce here. So let me give you some examples. So I'm now going to take you to, um, let's have a look at dollar CAD here. And I'm going to show you a monthly chart of dollar CAD. And I'm going to take you back here. Okay, so on this monthly chart, we got a pullback on the monthly time frame here to a monthly 20 period moving average and these prior highs. So there was a high probability of a bounce occurring around that zone. It had a really nice pullback and I'll show you the, what the daily charts look like in a moment. But it had a really nice pullback there into a potential support zone. And uh, then... Of course, so relative to the monthly chart, we should expect some kind of bounce, which, as we can see, it bounced then for the next year overall. But we're not trying to necessarily get in and, and hold a trade for a year. But if I can get in off a lower time frame somewhere down here, which has a given stop loss, but then can run the trade based on the fact that the monthly chart should have you know, a decent bounce relative to the uh, the downside move that's how you get around get to doing it so what I then do is if I take you to the daily chart and we'll scroll it back let me just press pause while I'm so here's a classic situation here where this was it this was that pullback that you just seen on the monthly chart taking it down to the daily chart had a lovely engro uh, uh, engulfing type candle on that day um, anyway and there are reasons why using DST funnily enough my DST strategy they're using that to get in on that day and then have a, that run based on the monthly so all of a sudden then you've got a relatively tight stop in relative turns but then you're bound you're, you're trading um, what is a much larger move let me give you now now that's um, that's dollar cad from a couple of years ago what about some recent examples okay let's go into that so let's now go to euro dollar and this was a recent example because I've been um, in a well, I took a trade with our uh, members on the app on our, our swing traders um, back down here in in May in late May, and then we've had this wonderful run up up here. It, was, it went straight up and it was a really nice run. You look at that at that time, it was a really nice run. So we then um, took our profits at around about one thirteen thirty, I think, off the top of my head, um, and then we started adding back in. So we added back in at 112.60, I believe, and 111.80. We had a couple of entries back in, then ran that back up. Uh, right away, back up. Uh, we took some off in the 116 zone, and then the rest, we took well, the final amount out. I think it was just below 119. So not too bad so far, um, as far as that trade was concerned. But how do you get to get into a trade like that and run it? 
Well, firstly, this is just on the daily chart. Now, when we executed that trade back down here, there were reasons why we wanted to execute after this big up day here and into the next day. So we utilized um, those reasons. But again, a lot of that came back down to that multiple time frame analysis. So yes, I'm executing off of a daily chart there, but it's what was going on on the higher time frames, like the weekly, monthly, quarterly charts as well, which was given us that um, supporting evidence, shall we say, for us to say, right, we're not just going to get into this and stay in it for three days and then bank our profits. We're, in fact, we're going to trade in and out of this so that we end up having a monster trade. And that's what happened. Um, the challenge account is already up like 50% now on, on the back of trades like this. So I think it's just over 50% actually. So that's how you get to do all this sort of stuff. And um, it's you're not going to get monster risk reward trades every on every trade. Um, that just doesn't happen in the real world. But you only need it to happen now and again for you to have you know a really big return. So do have just consider using multiple time frame analysis. So if you let's say a day trader or actually let's, let's take swing traders for example, you're a day, day, uh, you're a swing trader, you've got a full time job. Then what you want to be doing is, yes, you might be trading a setup off of um, a daily chart, but sometimes that setup might be coming along on a weekly chart or a monthly chart as well. So you can enter off the daily and then run it based on those higher time frames. So just giving you a bit of food for thought there, uh, talking about uh, risk to reward and getting those big whoppers, and so um, which do come along now and again. Not every trade by all means, but when they do line up across your time frames, then look for ways to run that trade that bit more. And then it can get complicated, you, know, com you know, I say complicated, but a bit more um, involved because then you can add and build to the position, which is what I was doing through this as well with the, uh, the Euro trade. So, and then you're building um, on an existing position as well. So there you go. A little bit of food for thought for Saturday today, as far as risk to reward. Um, and that's how you do it. Um, so we have a lot of stuff coming out um, soon, actually in early September, what with the new software come being launched. And so we're going to be using that in combination with DST and using the power of DST with that software. So that's all going to be coming soon and you'll be hearing about that as well. So that will really help as a supporting mechanism, which is much more of a supporting mechanism. But anyway, I'll talk about it closer to the time. So anyway, food for thought there. Um, high risk reward ratio trades. Don't think you've got to try and get them on every trade. But when they do set up and the, and the, the time frames are aligned, then do look for ways to run it. Food for thought. Catch you next week. Take care for now.